Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to explain my workflow and production methods uh, when producing electronic music and it's going to be specifically demonstrating in Cubase but a lot of the things that I'm going to say is going to apply to other DAWs as well. So the number one thing that I always start with is I try to get some drum sounds. Some kind of uh, kick and snare and hats that I'm happy with. Something that like, that complement each other. I'm not going to worry too much about it because once the song is fully developed and finished and I know what kind of a bass line I'm working with, uh, bass sounds, synths and stuff like that, that will actually probably end up determining what sound in the end I need for a kick drum for example um, so I'm not gonna worry too much but what I will do is I'll spend some time in Groove Agent um, and this can apply to any other drum rack of your choice is I'll start with some samples I'll just flip through something that's like decently punchy maybe some low end or whatnot I'll drop it in I might start stacking samples. In this case I only have a single kick but I have multiple kicks that I'm working with. Uh, this here has a stacked kick. Uh, the snare is stacked with four then there's a clap with uh, three and these are panned hard left and hard right to get some nice width. Uh, so basically what I was doing in this song here is I just bare bones started stacking samples trying to find some kind of good sound uh, and the the sounds that I was working with I just created a small loop and then made sure that they sounded decently well together so I'll show you how it sounds here so that like that sound was totally fine to me. I'll probably make tweaks in the end when I'm mixing or something. Uh, so I start with that. I have drum sounds. Next what I'm gonna try and do is find some kind of uh, complementary sound. Could be a bass, could be a synth uh, lead part or something. In this case I think it was a bass line because I've been working to hone in a more interesting bass line that complements with the kick and I kind of understand how I can do that so I just jump on that and start writing. And the, the one main trick that I would uh, very heavily emphasize and this is something I learned from I think it was Ill Gates from a, a free seminar that he or thing yeah free se online seminar that he was uh, doing is always start with this master loop section and basically what you're doing is you're creating a small loop section let's say uh, four bars long or something of your choice something fairly short maybe eight bars long uh, and you're creating just as much as you can anything that kinda sounds like it could fit in the song somewheres you just start creating and keep adding things and adding things and adding things and what he was saying uh, what Ill Gates was saying was just say yes to everything and that's so true because you just want to keep doing things like uh, here I added a kick drum and I was like oh sweet yeah cool uh, but I added more kick drums I added another kick drum loop here and then another kick drum loop here and I just found them uh, in Media Bay uh, from the the menu here in Media Bay, found these loops, dropped them in. I just kind of surfed through these loops and was like, oh, actually, it kind of complements what I was doing here. Even though like too many kicks logically is just going to cloud up a mix, I just dropped it in. I was like, whatever, uh, I'm saying yes to it. Drop it in there. Uh, I had a bass line and then I had a secondary. Uh, so I'll show you the bass line here. And then there's also a complementary like synth bass, which is a little bit higher of a register. Mm -hmm. 
So this sound, I found it complemented the bass line. It, they weren't clashing, but I, uh, what I did was I was searching through, again, through Media Bay. I'm just flipping through a bunch of different things. And the sound, that particular bass sound, sounded really good. But it had this weird loop that wasn't working with it. So what I did is I stole this entire bass loop, and I just stole the sound, and I sampled it. And I used it in the sample track here, and then I created a MIDI bass line that actually worked with the song. So I was stacking everything. So this bass line and this bass line, they both sound good together, stacked in one. Uh, then I think I found a synth here. That just was kind of cool. I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah, that sounds interesting. And then I complemented that sound with my own synth. So I recorded my own synth with a similar but slightly different sound. And when, they, when they're played both together, let's get this a little bit louder. So when I played them both together, it has like an interesting texture. Uh, again, just saying yes to creating more and more stuff. Added a string section. Because why not? I need a pad in there. Um, and then I added some more groovy hats. Spaced them out. Added shakers. And then I found this other loop section and I cut a lot of this low end energy out and high end energy. So it's just like the the shuffly high mids section. Um, and also a hand drum. I love hand drums in my tunes. So I added that guy in there. Um, what else did I add? So actually, like it's pretty bare bones at this point. But so I, I still just had this eight bar loop uh, with the with a kind of okay drum sequence. Um, a lot of the things were starting to clash, but the point of this is you're just trying to get all the ideas out, just anything and everything, all of, uh, all of the things that you can possibly think of and add into. Then what you're gonna be doing is going through like a filtration process. So then what you're deciding is, okay, now I have all these elements in my song that some of them are clashing or whatnot but once you start spreading them out into a song format like here I'm uh, multiplying all the drums across here uh, I take the extra kick drums and I put them out into their own little sections so it creates interest with the kick drum um, and then here you can see I'm, I'm using only one at a time and then I'm actually mixing between the two and then I switch to this one, and then I do it again later. I pull it out and go and do it again later. So just that alone creates a little bit interest in the kick drum. Uh, here I have the interesting groovy part playing in the intros, the down, like the drop, and the outros. And I specifically avoided using that in conjunction with the groovy hats for the most part, except for when it's transitioning because there's it's a little too busy so like there's quite a bit of stuff going on and I found that in the main sections where there's synths and stuff if I drop this out it adds just a little bit more clarity and definition to the what's going on in the song um, and then I started dropping in vocals kind of after the fact because uh, I felt this song definitely needed some vocals once I stretched it out and it was like it needed a little bit more interest and then I started adding some uh, transition and effects after I stretched out and made some kind of a, a loop or sorry some kind of a, a song structure um, but yeah so I, I wanted to share that with you because this is like fresh in my mind and the reason why I'm telling you this is because or why I'm deciding to generate this video and describe all these things is that I struggle to finish songs. Uh, I even struggle to start songs. I'll I'll come up with some kind of loop section, and 
I try to make it a song from the get-go and I think that that just bogs me down and it keeps me from creating anything from being creative and the the cool trick here that uh, Il Gates was describing is just say yes like just put, put all your energy into creating whatever and then later on you can decide if it fits in the song or not and then you can decide where it's going to go and by having all these extra pieces you can spread them out and choose between them in different sections and then it actually creates interest in the song and then at in that sense you're actually producing quality songs because you're not rehashing the same sound over the entire length of the song you have all these things to choose from and then um, from a producer standpoint you have so much more to work with and to like after the fact decide and and plot it out into a full song so and yeah the the other side of the coin is to this is that I wrote this tune within I think I don't know I, I did like the loop section I wrote everything within I think maybe five hours or something and then I started spreading it out into a song <clears throat> and I took another maybe three hours to to get it kind of all chopped and and organized like this and drawn out into a song and then maybe another hour spent uh, finding some vocal takes and dropping them in and trying to do something interesting and finding the effects so all of this actually was actually within 24 hours time because I started with the drums in an evening for like I don't know maybe an hour or something and then started finishing the the full master loop section um, and yeah it just kind of came to a surprise to me that oh wow I could like actually create something pretty substantial and something that I'm actually comfortable with and I like and it didn't take that much time and I kinda wanna show you the song just cause it's where's my mixer oh you know what these are gonna be way off now never mind I just won't show the song so that is my spiel for today that is um, whatever production advice I can offer to you uh, I am by no means a uh, <laughs> successful producer or anything but these are some of the things that I've learned in the last maybe couple years um, and only am now like really seeing the benefit of implementing that master loop saying yes to everything and worrying about how it's going to make and produce be produced into a full-fledged song kind of after the fact once you have all this stuff to work with so in conclusion thanks for watching hopefully this helps you in your productions and uh, take care and see you in the next video bye bye